Hey everybody, I'm Niall Marr and in this video we are going to be talking all about creating custom React hooks. This is the sixth video in my React hook series, so if you haven't checked those videos out, you should probably go and check them out first. Custom React hooks allow us to compose our own hooks. Now we've used things like use state, use effect and that already, but what custom hooks allow us to do is create our own use whatever events that we can actually leverage to create reusable logic throughout our applications. Now, it might sound a little bit complicated at first, but trust me, it's a lot simpler than you'd think because we're just going to hook into the lifecycle methods that the hooks already give us and then return that logic. So in this video, we are going to take a modal, which we usually handle closing by touching outside of it and when we touch outside of it it closes or when we're touching inside of it it doesn't close but that's a useful feature that could be used in a lot of places for like tool tips or drop down menus so we are going to refactor it to pull it out into a custom hook that could be used for anything so let's uh that's enough of me kind of rambling on um i think it'll make a lot more sense when we jump into the code so let's jump in so before we jump in i just like to point out in the docs that there's a section here all about building your own hooks so as it says here building your own hooks lets you extract component logic into reusable functions. And why is that better than uh, a, a normal function? And that's because we can use state and other hooks or lifecycle methods given to us by React in our custom hooks. And in our example here, we are actually going to use this model, as I said in the intro, and all it does is when we click inside it, it does nothing. And when we click outside of it, it closes again. So we're going to talk through the logic here real quick. And basically we have a use state here to set up if the model is open, and then we can set it to open or close using the set model open. We're creating a ref with the use ref to create a, a reference to the div here so that we have a reference to that element when we are clicking on it, so we know when we're inside it or outside it. And we are using the use effect to actually append the event listeners to the, the, to the DOM so that we know when, or that we're actually checking on clicks, whether we're inside or outside of that modal. So up here, we're creating a function called listener, and it takes an event property, and we're just checking if not ref.current or ref.current.contains event.target. And then we can return back out of it. And that just makes sure that we do nothing if we're clicking the refs element or descendant elements of it. And if we are if if we get past that, then we're just going to close it because it means we're outside of the element. And as always, when we're adding event listeners, we return a cleanup function here. So there's nothing too crazy in the markdown here. We just have the we just have this or the in the JSX here, we just have this set mold open to true um when we click on the button. So the first thing we're gonna do just to make sure you have um an understanding of a very simple custom hook is we're actually going to extract this logic out into uh, a toggle uh, state hook and this probably isn't that useful because getting one rid of one line to have to import a, another file probably isn't that useful but maybe if you wanted to expand on the logic it might be but we're just going to do it just to show you how a simple custom hook is made so in our files in the custom hooks directory because that's the lesson we're on we are going to create a file called use toggle and we always use the use word first because all of the hooks in react uh use the use keyword to kind of identify it's a hook and we're going to keep to that when we're making our own custom ones as well so use toggle and 
inside here, and I suppose the only thing that's different about a hook versus a normal component is a custom hook basically returns logic instead of JSX. So because of that, we can imp we have to import just the use state from React. And normally we would always see the React or import React here as well. But because we're not using any JSX here, we're going to be just exporting logic. We don't need that here. And so then we're going to create a const called use toggle. And use toggle is going to be a function as could be expected. And we'll, we'll say, let's have the default state for the toggle. So we're going to say state or is active. So we don't get mixed up with calling state words and everything else later on. And we will return something in a minute. So I'm going to preempt that we're going to return an array. And the reason I know we're going to return an array is we're going to try and mimic this here. We're going to try and return an is model open and a set model open. So we're going to say const uh, is, is toggled and then set is toggled equals use state and we will set this to is active and then we will return return these pieces back out and just to make sure that we have uh, something a little bit extra here to make it worth our, I suppose, wasting our time on this is let's put in a counter on this as well. So we'll say const uh, toggle count and set toggle count equals use state and we'll initialize that to zero by default and every time we call the is toggled we're going to increment that so i'm going to bring in a use effect here and in the use effect We are going to give it a callback and we are going to say anytime the is toggled or set is toggled is changed that we are going to set toggle count to toggle count. toggle count plus one and we return a callback because we're based on the previous one and then we are going to actually return out a third argument which we haven't seen here yet which is the toggle count and then we have to export out our use toggle Perfect. Now, let's just try and replace what we've had in the other app here, or this line here, with our custom hook to see if we can get rid of the state here first. So, let's import our hook. And let's import use toggle from use toggle. And the first two items our and because we use an array again we can call these whatever we want are coming out from our use toggle now instead of the use state hook so you can see use state is no longer used 
and we can open the model still and close it. So we've just quickly refactored a little bit of state into a custom hook, which wasn't too difficult. And now if we want, we can have the counter here. And I'm just to show you how it works, I'm going to console.log the counter here. And we'll open the console. And we have our counter working as well. Now, that one's a little bit pointless. And I think you'll see when we start refactoring the use effect, it will be a lot more useful to us. So let's uh, delete this line and get rid of this counter. And then we are going to move on to actually uh, getting our, oh, I'll close this again. So we're going to actually move on to refactoring our use effect back out. So this is going to be a little bit more interesting. So we're going to call this hook, and uh, we'll make a new file for this one. We're going to call this use on out or on click outside because we want to track if we're clicking on outside and i'm just going to close this sidebar here to give us a little bit more room again and we are going to leverage the use effect hook here in the creation of this one so i'm going to import use effect from react and again because i'm not using the jsx in this i don't need to import react and then i'm going to make a function called use on click outside and this is going to be a function And then we are going to export default so I don't forget later. Use on click outside. So in here, we basically want to take all of this logic here. So I'm going to actually copy all of this here or cut it for now. And we're going to see what we would need to get this working as a custom hook. So there is a couple of things we're missing here. And to make this reusable, it, this is actually a very handy way of seeing what we should probably pass in as uh, properties to our hook to make it a little bit more dynamic and reusable. And that's actually if we can see what isn't being used anymore. So for this hook, we're going to need a ref because we can see that we don't have that in here. And because we have no state in here, but we know we are going to do something and it's not going to be close it, we'll say else we'll handle it. So we're going to call this um, handle or handler. And what I will do is just pass this, the handler, uh, with the event back to it. And that's just so that we can use the event object uh, and it'll be a lot more uh, a lot more reusable in case we want to access something with our handler with that event as well. So then we can save this and go back to our app.js and so now we are going to try and fix this by instead of using use effect we are going to import use uh, click or what's it called again can't remember already use on click outside so use on click outside or from and we'll say uh, use on click outside and then we will just pass we were, we're basically going to 
just use this in here and we know it takes two properties we have our ref above it so we're going to pass it the ref first and then it takes a function which will be its callback or a handler and we're going to want to call uh, set modal open to false so we're going to give it a little anonymous arrow function here and we'll say set modal open to false now if all is going well this should work so let's check it out and we're clicking inside it's doing okay and boom so now our component is a lot less lines so we've just removed all that logic but we could then use that hook on other things so if we wanted to you know add an outside click or we want to see something outside the button we could just add it to uh, the events here and it'd be very easy so if we want to add tool tips or if we want to add drop down menus or we want to do anything with that logic now we could just attach that hook to it so this is actually a hook you could take and use in your own code base today to you know make sure you can use it wherever you want so one of my favorite resources for actually going and you know getting inspiration for the kinds of things we can do with hooks is the usehooks.com site this site is so cool so basically this usehooks.com and i'll leave a link in the description below has loads of recipes for different custom hooks for common use cases like use async or where i actually got this sample was from this site here uh use require auth and you'll start to see all of the crazy cool things that people are actually using uh, or creating with custom hooks. So I definitely check this site out if you're looking for some inspiration on the kinds of things you can build using hooks. And yeah, th this is just such a cool site. So if you found that video helpful, I would love if you liked and subscribed. And if you've any questions about hooks or you have a suggestion what you would like to see me create with a custom hook leave them in the comments below and until next time happy coding